Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about refactoring. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, would you say that software engineers are open to their code being refactored by other software engineers? If they're not immature, yeah, I would say so. Uh, because the, the the reality is that unless you're open to refactoring, how the hell are, is anybody going to fix a bug or uh, develop the code further when new features are coming in? Uh, the reality is, guys, which is this sad little thing that is not okay to say in today's society, but the, the, the reality is that we are all different, we have different talents, and even if you are a software developer, that doesn't make you a good software developer. And so if someone uh, finds that your software could have been written in a nicer way, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you're, like, well, that's at least how I feel about it. My feelings about writing software should not take precedency over the efficiency of the work that we are doing. And a classic one that I see all the time is that someone writes a component that is shit in uh, the system and then other people feel as if they can't exactly, they can't really refactor this. because One part is because they feel like, oh, this is a lot of work, which perpetuates the fucking problem and I, I usually talk a lot with my teams about this, where I tell them that you, I expect you to fix this. It's not optional. If I see, it's the boy scouting rule right here. If you, if I see that they add features without fixing the existing code that surrounds the feature, when I see that they shim things in, they don't write any tests, and I ask them, why are you not writing tests for this stuff? And then they say, oh, the code is kind of ugly, it's kind of big, etc. Et and I go, yeah, but then fix it. Fix it you are paid to fix it because otherwise that basically means that when the first person who wrote the code has to write it perfectly because you're never going to fix it if it didn't turn out that this was so good and that is the entire problem this is the snowballing effect that I've talked to you uh, a few times about before where code increasingly gets worse and worse and worse and it all comes down to this perpetual stupidity of the software developer or our, uh, it's not stupidity always it's down to damn laziness because the software developer doesn't want to deal with the mess that somebody else made because that impacts their scope of what they are doing so if someone else makes a mistake before you and you can get away with not fixing that problem you try because it's the lazy person's way of doing it. It's the quote-unquote simple thing to do. And that is nigh on every software developer I've ever worked with. And that is why software continues being shit once it's been established. It's the broken window problem. You just need one. Because the average software developer does not have what it takes, the personal discipline or whatever, it's sort of like, you know, that's why most people are getting fatter these days, because you can't even get them to, to work out for 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes of walking is too much for the average human to sustain. I think I saw numbers, uh, I don't know, this was from the US, I thought it was like the, the North American... Uh, the Americans have like less than 20% or something like that get the like weekly dose of the the health or I can't remember now which organization but like they recommended a uh, dose of exercise like only 20% ish something like that gets that and I mean I'm certain that other countries have the same sort of uh, like a uh, similar sort of problems and that's sort of this thing that I come back to humans are lazy 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 as hell and so it's really, really important that this doesn't become an issue. And sure, some software developers are sensitive because some people have, it's not, sometimes they are fine with that you refactor the code. And that is usually when they have done a shitty job or they like sort of hacked it together. It's not something they care about. The times they get really sensitive about it is when it's their baby. When you're dealing with the person who fell in love with their own code 
who were doing something clever. Like you can almost smell it. If it's a if it's a standard like hey, it's a product feature, they're gonna ship it. They've shipped a hundred things like this. Usually they don't care so much about it. But if there's something clever about it, if they made their own tool or their own script, or maybe in this specific situation they might have refactored what somebody else did and it was slightly nicer, etc., etc then they might be more sensitive about it. And this is uh, where, like, as I've said, a manager will never be able to fix this problem. And this is why it's so difficult to run an effective, effective working software team in today's IT world. Because the people who you give the, on average, who has the authority or like the influence to, to stop these sorts of situations and mitigate these sorts of problems, they are not even working as software developers, they're engineering managers. And that's why I tell people, if you want to be able to effectively run a software team, you need a tech lead of influence, a person who understands how a effective software team is run, how to do, you know, how, how, how to have a conversation with people, how to talk to the different software developers and make them understand that, you know, they can actually go into the code review themselves and imp give their input. And the reason for this is because, as I said, because if you have someone who is creating a sense of, oh, I can't really fix this, I can't really change this, etc., etc., you need someone at a higher level who can go in and say, yep, stop this and just do this thing. Because when the people and the coworkers or like the team members start feeling a little bit like, oh no, the Bob wrote this and then Jane doesn't feel like she can change it, even though it is ugly, then someone has to be able to facilitate an open discussion about it and make everybody realize that this is not up for discussion. Fix it. And Jane can't do that because she doesn't want to stick out or like be this or that and Bob is the same way when Jane does it because you don't they don't want to f cause friction between themselves and somebody else within the in the group and that's where true leadership is shown where they realize that they are in a stalemate between each other because they don't feel like it is their role or their place to have this conversation about changing code and things like that and how to do things. That's where a leader has to understand that this is a situation where you are forced. You have to go in and help out. And if you do nothing here, as I said, all that's going to happen is that they are going to start shimming and trying to work around the problem and actually start creating legacy. They're going to go from most likely on an average day, good software developers who do a really good job, to just shim programming and hacking things together because they have a mental blocker that you need to fix. So what I want you to take away from this is that, well, some software engineers are definitely sensitive about you refactoring their code and to them I say go the fuck up. And to the ones who don't refactor code because they for some reason believe that code is immutable or because they don't want to increase the scope of their work etc etc. I want you to all to know that you are the reason why the software industries, uh, the majority of systems are shit. You and all the incompetent software developers, you are the reason, you are at fault. Because you are able to see that this is not good and you say no. I'm not going to try to help the situation, I'm not going to try to fix it because you're either too lazy to do it, it's too troublesome, you don't want to increase the scope, you're afraid because if you do you you might cause a bug etc etc. Yeah and all of this is true, all of it. And you can point and ask management and so forth and so forth, you can do whatever you want but this is the fundamental problem. This is why, most, why so many systems suck because nobody fixes this problem. So uh, the thing that I try to say to people is that you need, in order to fix this problem, you need a tech lead or a person who is at the code level able to say, this is a problem, fix it. Engineering managers won't be able to do this. No one higher up is ever going to be able to do this because you can sit there and you can regurgitate the mantra that, you know, we have a blameless culture, um, you should be boy scouting, you should be fixing things, etc, etc. But unless you are in the trenches with your developers, pointing out specific pull requests, this here is not good, can we fix this, etc, etc. Unless you are at that level, I do not believe that you will have the ability to fix this problem. Have a great day.